Project Lawful aka Plane Crash by Yarwain, aka Eliezer Yudkowski and Lynn Tamande. My fun research project has more existential risk than I anticipated. Episode 141. Earth security notifies the Chosen of Asmodeus that Corva Talandria seems to have broken down in tears in the middle of the classroom. Thankfully, after the Chosen left with Keltham. Is this happening inside Alter Cheliax? If it happened in Alter Cheliax, they'd probably tell Keltham, right? And if it's not happening in Alter Cheliax, everybody in the classroom needs to be told it hasn't. Huh? It doesn't seem inherently implausible that a student in Taldor would start crying. Some of the kidnapped Taldane students cry. However, Keltham will probably go talk to Talandria if he learns this, and that seems like a situation where a slip-up might happen. Presumably she's being mind-read. Is she in any state to talk with Keltham if he shows up wanting to talk to her? Talandria is currently experiencing an amount of self-hatred that seems appropriate for somebody as pathetic as herself. She's currently imagining being shot through with pieces of the sun, until only the tiny fraction of her that isn't pathetic remains, and feeling out whether she could learn to be okay with being a paving stone. Given that she's crying in the first place, in front of the other students, and that this is incredibly, incredibly bad for her self-interest, security is concerned that Talandria wouldn't be able to run bluff on Keltham, even though her soul depends on it. Dominate person? Toss her to Subirax for attempted reforging? They also haven't tried flogging Talandria until her morale improves, which would be the first resort anywhere sensible if they're not pretending to be fucking Taldor. How about they don't tell Keltham about this, and tell the other students it's not the case in Alter Cheliax, and pull her out an hour before time's up to see if she can be put back into condition to bluff Keltham. Also, they should loop in Asmodia, who she thinks liked Talandria. Should Asmodia possibly be going back in and telling Talandria that she's at least got a place working on Asmodia's wall if Keltham doesn't want her? Talandria was pretty helpful about analyzing nobility equilibria after she was called in. Asmodia is mostly worried because she doesn't know if she'd be sabotaging Talandria even further by telling her that, which is why Asmodia hasn't said it already. Does Savar know how people work? Well, it seems hard to sabotage the girl any harder. Plus, even if she pulls it together and figures out the math, they probably don't want to allow someone with composure problems to have Keltham contact anyway. So Asmodia might as well go in and say it. Right. Asmodia will go right down. If Keltham doesn't hire you, I'm planning to assign you to work on my wall, on a piece of paper and hand that to Corva. She's not sure if Corva is in shape to hear a message that's spoken once and can't be reread. Corva lifts her head up and reads the paper. It makes sense. She's shit at math, evidently, but she dimly remembers that she also gave herself even odds of failing out last night, and she was planning to perfectly calmly angle for a support position of some kind, maybe writing out Keltham's lessons in a form that somewhat dimmer people have a prayer of understanding once she's put more hours in and figured out what's going on with them herself. But the shadows that real things cast on other pieces of reality, she's good at that and she'll learn things, which is the sort of thing that might make her soul non-worthless again. The biggest, immediate problem now then, is the crying. Which, well, from a wall perspective, it's not a problem. She knows on about two seconds thought exactly why her alter self is crying, and she could probably bluff Keltham dead about this particular thing. Which is convenient because she still feels much nearer dead than she'd like. Security will relay to the Chosen that Talandria seems much more together immediately after reading Asmodeus note. Possibly the newbies still don't, like, particularly believe Sivar about some things. Maybe it's time to start using mind control on them. Security does not see how Sevar could have made herself any clearer. Talandria is thinking particularly that she could bluff Keltham about why she's crying. Talandria's thoughts went immediately to particular stories that seem reasonable to security, and about how her general composure will seem more consistent later with her having had a breakdown now, possibly relevant if they want to tell Keltham now that Talandria's broken down, and tell him one less lie, he supposes. This security has never had an easy time intuiting the exact outlines of Savar's minimize lies policy and is just throwing everything to her. 
Conspiracies are probably more likely to cover up crying breakdowns, which they could easily cover up, than to not do that, so it earns them some points. If Talandria's bluff is really good enough, especially in light of the fact that the Taldor girls do sometimes have crying breakdowns. Hit her with a splendor, just in case, and then tell Keltham. She should ask Subirox about the idea of using suggestion to make all her underlings believe she's not going to have them permanently reduced to rubble for no reason. It's very appealing, but maybe there's some reason this isn't standard, which isn't just the cost of the suggestions. Among the few things that Dathilan has in common with Cheliax is that it takes a fair amount to make an adult Dathilani break down in tears in public. Math tests won't do it, even math tests with their future careers at stake. When Keltham allowed himself to cry about how 150 million people weren't going to die for his having entered their world, he sent Carissa out of the room first. Not from thinking that he was doing something bad that must be hidden. Keltham did not try to hide from her afterwards that it had happened, but their relationship being so new, he wasn't sure how the alien might emotionally brain update about him if she witnessed it directly. And that anxiety played into a different social convention out of Dath Ilan, that he and Carissa hadn't yet had the conversation that you have before you cry in front of someone, or show other signs of great emotional distress. Dath Ilani, do not break down and weep in front of strangers. It's not that they hide weakness, it's that you don't lay that on someone who hasn't agreed to do emotional labour about you. If it happens anyways, something is really wrong. Wrong on a scale that transcends bothering all of the people around you. Keltham will listen to the security notification with a deer and glare lamp expression and then turn to ask Carissa for advice. In particular, should they possibly go get Mayol? Mayol seems like he might know how to handle this situation. Sure, as founder, this is his responsibility. Possibly even his fault. It doesn't mean Keltham actually knows how to handle this situation worth a noodle. I don't know that you have to handle it. Maya Yall has experience commanding teenagers, so I guess he'd be the person to ask if you want to ask somebody. But the emotional well-being of every person here isn't your responsibility. In Dath Alani companies, if an employee of yours started crying, would that be your job to solve? He's the founder. Everything is his job to, at the very least, make sure somebody is solving. If there's no one person whose job it is, then it's Keltham's job. All right, let's go ask Malyol. Emotional support and guidance is normally a priest sort of job anyway. Keltham's reflexes out of civilization do not particularly call for him to walk places to talk to emergency responders during mental health emergencies. That's what phones or security are for. He'll start striding quickly towards the classroom while asking security to have Malyo meet them there. Is the situation in the classroom currently stable? Yes, Asmodia happened to be nearby and took temporary responsibility for Talandria. He would have guessed Ioni, failover to Pilar, especially since Asmodia had already handed in her work. Slightly confusing, but not obviously important, possibly indicates something along the lines of, Asmodia asks security to keep a lookout for anything she could impressively assume responsibility for handling. No obvious conspiracy correlates. Keltham is noticing it simply because he is trained to notice confusion. Don't lie to Keltham. Don't even ambiguously lie to Keltham. We don't have protocols for mental health emergencies because even Alter, Cheliax, doesn't have those. Asmodia seems to be trying to be helpful to Talandria. Fine, Asmodia did not follow some established taking responsibility procedure. Security clarifies, in case Keltham was getting the wrong impression here, that Cheliax doesn't actually have any standard procedures like security is sure civilization has, and Asmodia isn't trained in anything like he's sure civilization does. Security doesn't particularly know what to do either when somebody bursts into tears but isn't violent. It's not really a security issue per se. Yes, thank you. It wasn't very much of a ray of hope, but it was hope, and something needed to destroy it. Carissa, snap horrible decision before they get there. Does she think Talandria is still worth hiring? Talandria would have been on his list as a Tier 2, even if she'd completely failed the exam, Tier 1 if she'd done okay on it. But at least in civilization, this would be a symptom of somebody who ends up requiring tons of emotional support and being a distraction, and it would be a famously bad idea to have her in your high-pressure startup. 
You mostly can't improve people. You can only filter them, goes the proverb out of Dath Ilan. Mainly, if somebody can't handle the pressures of civilization, you want to encourage them to go to a quiet city, or the future, depending, and not have more kids who can't handle civilization. But somebody in governance thought Talandria would be a good pick for the project, for some reason, presumably, and she did do well in chemistry. I think you should not hire her because she started crying in the middle of an exam. This project already started a god war. It's not a reasonable expectation of people who are emotionally fragile to handle the sort of things that are going to happen well, and it'd plausibly disqualify her from taking the world-wound oath if it had happened before that, and that's the benchmark our society has for people who can handle really, really serious things. That's what he figured. Nobody tell Talandria that she didn't even need to pass the exam, unless it somehow seems like a very good idea for her to learn that fact. Message to Corva. Talandria, I've been informed that Keltham is sending Myalol in to escort you out. That's going to happen here exactly the way it would in Alter Cheliax, even without Keltham present, so everybody can see it and have the same story inside their minds. Keep in mind that you're useful to me, even if to nobody else. I don't intend to let you end up as a paving stone, ever, if you serve me well. Why the fuck would Myalol escort her? Well, if Keltham thought that was a reasonable thing to do, then sure. But why the fuck did Keltham think that that was a reasonable thing to do? Why did people even tell Keltham? Not the point. She'll go. She's not crying much anymore, although her makeup is messed up and her face is still kind of red and puffy, and her heart rate might be spiking despite the assurance. Ferrer Mayol will enter the classroom, wordlessly looking sad and grandfatherly, and hold out a gentle hand to Corva Talandria. His body posture indicates without words that it's time for her to go. Possibly Lady Avaricia has sense motive high enough to see through his bluff. Definitely nobody else, even with everybody in the entire classroom getting the bonus from knowing with certainty it's a bluff. Corva is mostly confused about why everyone, including Keltham, apparently, has decided that this is worthy of a crown-fucking trial. In places that aren't Cheliacs, people do actually cry in only moderately stressful situations sometimes. She'll go with Mayo just fine, though, and try to stay very firmly in the mindset of her alter self, who is also confused about why people are having a crown trial about this, and is additionally really embarrassed as opposed to her real self, who would probably be terrified if she were allowed to have emotions right now. As Modia picks up Corva's exam paper, Keltham will no doubt want to see it. It's data about what sort of person fails like this, and follows Corva out. Damn. Alexandra wishes he could lie like Mayol. Well, he'll get there someday. Lord Asmodeus willing. Goodbye, Corva Talandria. Down in flames and no one to blame but yourself. One day when you're a paving stone in hell, Corva, you may know that Alexander Iscara once thought of you as his most formidable rival. Briefly. Now to see how the rest of the class burns out. Keltham is here in case Corva Talandria has anything she wants to say to him. Otherwise, she can go with Mayol. Well, she's in the middle of being escorted away by Mayol for some reason, so it's not going to occur to her that Keltham might want her to interrupt that to say anything to him. Especially since a student breaking down in tears isn't a big deal, and he probably has more important things to deal with, but she'll wipe her eyes, smile, and half laugh at herself, sadly, because that's what she intuitively feels like she would do if she were moderately embarrassed about being a crybaby in front of Keltham, in a situation where the stakes for being a crybaby aren't actually that high. It'd be more reassuring if he knew the likelihood ratios from different internal states of possible mental health emergencies to an eye-wipe, smile, and half-laugh. He'll nod at her in reply, and watch her go. Fun fact. Dathelan has zero customs whatsoever against somebody leaving in the middle of a math exam. If they notice they're about to burst into tears, but are otherwise still able to act as an agent in the world, who would even be able to stop them? Obviously, Corva Talandria was too disabled to leave under her own power or didn't trust herself to do that, and waited for escort while staying where other people could see her, despite knowing that would cost them in distraction and possible emotional distress of their own. Just saying, here. How does this affect Talandria's hiring chances? 
Asmodia asks, because obviously nobody's told her anything about anything. Negatively. Why do you ask? Also, any particular reason you were called to assume temporary responsibility there? I'd been tutoring Corva up until that point, and thought she had a lot of promise. I want to hire her myself. Same arrangement as you made with Yaisa. Well, different job, obviously. Common wisdom out of civilization would say that you're possibly getting sucked into somebody else's emotional spiral of doom, shouldn't try to fix people unless you are personally an actual professional people fixer, and that there's a dozen obvious traps here that I wouldn't expect anybody in Galarian to understand. Those include the most compassionate workplaces, implicitly defiltering to get the most dysfunctional people who couldn't get jobs anywhere else, and compassionate people training people to malfunction by rewarding them with support and companionship when they do. I'm not going to veto directly. Talk to my all, though. I predict he'll be against it. And if he says no, you'll have a constipation of a time persuading me to say yes. I suppose I should ask what you'd hire her to do, though. Possibly. Help put my math lessons into a form where people who are neither Keltham nor Carissa Sevar, nor Asmodia, can understand them. I had that thought even before her breakdown over math specifically. You could potentially hire, say, Jack me for that, and not risk getting sucked into somebody else's emotional spiral of doom. I expect Corva to be better at it. Are you vetoing this? No. It wouldn't actually be my choice in civilization, who you get to hire and I'm reluctant to exercise whatever further power I have here. Delegating to Mylol, mostly. Whether he still wants her around in this fortress. I know that I don't understand terribly well how things work in Chelyax. Know that I may be making a lot of wrong inferences based on how things would work in civilization, and do have any inhibitions against ripping a life rope out of somebody else's hands when somebody else is throwing them one. Just be careful, Asmodia. In Civilization, this would potentially be the start of a story about the grim doom fate of Asmodia. Not in a tropes way, a reality way. You'd better not be evil enough to take her on out of compassion, unless you're very sure that you're evil enough to cut her loose. Next on the list of proverbial traps here is that if somebody doesn't want to go to a quiet city, or hell, I guess in this case, and you're the only place they have to stay that isn't that, that's a trap for you as much as for them and neither of you are likely to be happy in the trap together. To me, this all sounds like Doth Elan desperately trying to implement patches for having bred their population for good incredibly aggressively for generations, where Chelish people will simply fire someone if they are not an asset in a typical week, and not hang out with them if they are unpleasant to hang out with. Asmodea if Corva's not actually very good at this, but cries on you about how you're the first person to ever be nice to her, are you going to be conflicted emotionally about hiring Jack May instead? I won't be, and I'm confident of that. Alter Asmodia states honestly, and, so far as she knows, in green. Asmodia doesn't wonder whether that claim has become unreliable. Now, for her, until after the words leave her lips. She doesn't take them back after. There are limits to how much of her heresy she's willing to show openly. Carissa does not like how much of this situation was unpredictable to her. Why'd Talandria break down? Why's Keltham taking it this strongly? But she thinks that Keltham arriving at the strongly held stance that you should, as a matter of principle, never inconvenience yourself to keep someone else out of hell, quiet cities, what an ominous name, is a positive development on the whole, though she really, really wishes she had more of a handle on all of the moving parts. I think it's a good idea to have Mylal looking out just in case, but Cheliax doesn't have that conventional wisdom, and in this specific case, I think it's because making that error would be incredibly rare. In good countries, you get people living sad small lives so they can care for their aging parents and disabled siblings who don't care to go on to heaven yet. Here kids are raised better. Also, people here might cry more. I wouldn't want her in my unit at the World Wound, because sometimes your friends who don't have a resurrection arranged will get killed in front of you, and you need to be able to keep doing your job... I wouldn't want her on the project because sometimes we get attacked by Kuthites and have to take a sword for Keltham, but I don't particularly expect incompetence in jobs that definitely don't require those things. A lie, but one she's pretty sure is true in Taldor. 
going off observed crying frequency of kidnapped rescued Taldane girls. Like I said, leaving it to Mile Yal to decide if it's okay for her to be in the fortress. He'll wait until Asmodia is gone before mentioning to Carissa, by message because he doesn't particularly want security to hear, that you might have thought Keltham's dad would have been one of the more relatively selfish people in Dathilan. But Keltham's dad still got caught in a trap like that anyways, for three years or so, before Keltham's dad met Keltham's mom. Hand squeeze. She honestly has no idea what exactly this supposed trap is, but maybe it's revealing too much to say that. May I ask you for a favor? You can ask, and I can take responsibility for saying no if I don't want to, because if even I can't do that, it's embarrassing for civilization in front of Galarian. If I am ever making you sad and you think you'd be better off not dating me, leave. If I cannot expect you to be that evil, I'm going to be worried all the time. Think that falls under the category of, if I can't, it's my own fault, no? By Chelish standards, it's obviously what I'd try to do. I wouldn't want to do that to you either. You are not the sort of person my dad got temporarily doom-trapped with. But it's hard to promise anything for certain when you're afraid your genes might predispose you to a mistake. I'll tell Ioni she's the one person responsible for calling me out on it, if she thinks that's happening anyways. If you do that, it's your own fault. Anyone would agree. But I'd like to cry on you when you push me that far and not wonder if I'm causing you to make some kind of mistake your overly good society bred you for. Probably Ioni would catch it. Totally different kind of tears, Carissa. Unless I'm very mismodeling one of you or Talandria. Corva is pretty sure that Mayol's office lives more in real Cheliax than in alter Cheliax, so she allows her real self to have some thoughts, though it's still not... Well, actually, the emotion her real self seems to want to feel is the kind of quiet clarity she gets when the internal screaming breaks off to make way for thoughts that matter again. So sure, her real self can have emotions again if it's going to be responsible with them. Her honest assessment of herself is that she obviously fucked up the math test, but she acted in ways that were perfectly resonant with how Alter Corva would have acted. Nobody else acted how she expected their Alter selves to act, though except for Asmodia, so she suspects that Project Leadership is going to have a much dimmer view of her guesses at what Alter Corva would have been doing, and she's going to need to course correct if they let, well, Asmodia said she was stealing her. So she probably should actually figure out what the appropriate course correction is and not worry about the scenarios in which that's a pointless exercise. She bows her head, clasps her hands, and waits for instruction. Real Mylyol has no particular reason to speak to this failure. Apparently, Asmodia wants her for something, so any useful conversations are pending on Asmodia. Asmodia will be there soon enough. High Priest Mylyol, Keltham is leaving it to your altar self to talk me out of my intent to employ Corva Talandria, citing it as your own decision whether Corva can stay in the fortress. Is your altar self opposed to this sufficiently? That Alter Asmodia couldn't talk him out of it? I think my Alter self would plausibly tell you that he was monitoring the situation and stood ready to withdraw his permission for Talandria to be there at any time. Sir, I'm not asking you what your Alter self would plausibly say. I'm asking you what your Alter self would say. Keltham thinks in probabilities, not places where you definitely wouldn't. Good catch. I think my Alter self is a little tougher to talk around to this if you don't have a better excuse than Talandria possibly helping to write your math curriculum, unless she can actually do that. Security said she thought she could. I am far more confident in her ability to contribute to my wall, however. That's why I actually want her. Asmodia, we're not actually discussing whether Talandria can work on your wall. We're discussing whether or not Keltham knows she's still in the fortress. Yes, sir. Not sure what kind of mistake you were making there. Smells a bit like Alter Cheliax becoming too real for you. Whatever it is, fix it. Acknowledged, sir. Talandria, is there Keltham visible work Alter Talandria could do that would talk Alter Mylal into letting me keep you around? For that matter, does real Talandria even want to be visibly still here? 
Alter Talandria can in fact write expanded versions of Keltham's math curriculum, which will be useful if the project ever scales up enough to require employees who aren't our top dozen people. I would like to remain here and attend your lectures and any other math review lectures given by other researchers, even if I can't attend Keltham's, since it'll help with that goal. She's also baffled as to why crying during a math test would lead to expulsion from the compound, but that seems more like a wall question. Hmm. <clears throat> Not actually easy to figure out Alter Mayol here. My first reaction, it took Alter Asmodia around eight minutes to argue him into that, assuming she was being stubborn enough about it. And then Alter Mayol told her fine, but Talandria had better be producing and not causing any more fuss. Has Keltham ever seen you take eight minutes to be argued into anything and then change your mind about it? Real male y'all tends to weigh things up quickly and... All right, fair catch again. It can be hard not to think of Alter Mayol as weaker. And yes, I get that Keltham doesn't see him that way. You spent, let's say, about as long as this actually took. And then I made my snap decision that I was going to let you try it. Let you fuck up if that was what happened and let you get hurt enough to learn a lesson but not enough to affect your job performance before I intervened. She's all yours, Asmodia. Real Cheliacs, too. Note that security reports to Landria was thinking, we're fucking up Alter Cheliacs' realism. By even having this be a notable deal there, you might want to debrief her on that. Keltham definitely also thought it was a large deal but I'll prioritize asking Talandria about what the web of connections is like there and what Keltham might figure out later. Asmodia will then take Korva away, to the other side of the fortress, the hidden side, to her wall. She has a new pet now. Well, that certainly could have gone worse. Korva will follow Asmodia out and then wait to speak until spoken to. Even if Asmodia was right to see promise in her, she's still going to need to work hard to show her that it wasn't a mistake after that little performance. Asmodia's secret lair has high-quality tea and snacks. She is, in fact, a minor power in this fortress. After Asmodia has set out some snacks for both of them. All right, Korva, tell me about your theory of how everything we did was wrong for Altair Cheliax, and what you think needs to be done in the future to be consistent with it. Asmodia is feeling weirdly cheerful and excited about this. It's probably having her own pet. Practically her own slave. Moderately deep breath. I think it's bizarre that everyone decided to act like it was an emergency, worth the time of both the high priest and of Keltum himself. In other countries, in other places, I don't think people would have done that. Not in a school anyway, because crying during a difficult test just wouldn't be that uncommon, especially under moderately stressful conditions like the ones that we're operating under maybe in the middle of a secret government project, but it still doesn't sound right. Apparently, Keltham thought that this was a huge deal too, though. If he's the one who assumed that and other people followed his lead, well, we've just accidentally confirmed a bunch of things that caused him to make that assumption without us understanding what those things were, which is sort of terrible. If one of our people decided that it was a huge deal and Keltham went along with what he was being told— well, I guess in that case, we at least have more control over the situation, although we still have to figure out why Alter Cheliax is like that. I am totally baffled at the idea that crying during a test would lead to expulsion from the compound. I didn't even think we were allowed to leave the compound after failing out. The other dropouts are all still here. I have no idea what his model is of why silently crying during a math test might make someone a danger to keep in the same building. And if we have any more information on that, then I want it because I don't have it now. I'm also baffled that everyone involved would make that snap judgment without at any point asking what caused the crying fit instead of assuming, although maybe the alter version of the high priest was expected to ask about that and maybe he did. I was expecting everyone to pretty much ignore the crying. I thought Keltham might ask about it, in which case I was prepared to give him an explanation of why Alter Corvo was crying. I really didn't expect it to go any further than that. I think that in most places, including Taldor and including Cheliacs of the past, like teenage girls actually just cry sometimes, and this is moderately embarrassing for them if they do it in a serious situation. 
but it's not much of an update about them at all. Besides, yep, that sure is a teenage girl, and in some situations, it isn't even that. Now, of course, we have to find out what Keltham thinks happened. If we were following his lead, well, we want as much information as we can get about what his thought process was then, so we can determine whether to correct it. If it makes assumptions about the way people are here that are going to turn out to be wildly, obviously wrong, if he ever interacts with people who haven't been carefully screened for being the most emotionally stable people we have, or for that matter, if any of the other current students here ever have similar emotional reactions to Keltham's math tests, which doesn't seem impossible, or whether and how to confirm whatever assumptions he made about me and, by extension, the rest of us. If he was following our lead, then, gods, I still need to know why he thought the high priest might expel me from the compound. But I suppose we could, hmm, well, he did warn us that some of researchers might go insane or had gone partially insane already. Is it possible that everyone assumed that that was happening to me and reacted in line with how they've been reacting to other events in that bucket or with how they would have wanted to react to those situations with hindsight? Hold on, let me get a transcript en route. As Modia goes outside to page security, she needs a transcript of this whole situation from the start. Urgent priority since situation may be ongoing and recovery may be required. And strike the section of transcript where Keltham says Corva was slated to be hired even if she failed the math test. That's not vital info to Corva's understanding, and they don't need one more lie to Keltham. Corva doesn't need one more thing to conceal from Keltham that she knows. Advise Savar that there's a question in progress about how likely students are in altered chiliacs to cry during math tests, and whether somebody is going to need to tell Keltham at some point that something he thought was happening was not happening, but we're still in the middle of figuring out what was happening. When Asmodia is back. I think I'm going to recommend to Savar that we not lean as heavily on the Taldor framework in the future or at least not tell newcomers so much, that's what we're doing. This isn't as bad as the case where Avaricia suddenly decided she knew all about how nobility in Taldor worked, and therefore she must be authorized to act a particular way. You needed to improvise, and you only improvised as much as necessary. Good job on that, but still. People need to stop thinking that. If they know how something in Taldor works... They know how it works in Alter Cheliax. Alter Cheliax is clearly not, in fact, Taldor. Even a short visit to the facility showed me that relatively educated women in Taldor have much worse bluff than we've already shown Keltham in upper tier Ostenso wizard students. Keltham already knows that incoming students are accustomed to showing very tight emotional control by Dathilani standards and that he has to repeatedly tell students to give him any feedback on how he's doing. That's probably not why he thought a big emergency was going on, but nonetheless, he already knows it. It's occurring to me that people know which reality they all live in, and agree on that, because they spend years inside it together, and what we have here is a situation of everybody trying to improvise pieces of reality. Telling people that we sometimes take inspiration from Taldor is one thing, but it's just not true that when you know something true about Taldor, you know something that's authorized to say here. Asmodia is weirdly not more panicked than usual about this, the way she'd normally be. Maybe because she has a minion to help her now. I think there are a lot of problems with the Taldor framing, yes. In this case, I think the crying thing is more general. I think that lots of places have people occasionally cry in stressful situations, including the real Cheliacs. Reasoning being that I am from the real Cheliacs and I started crying. That makes me pathetic by our standards and perhaps by Keltham's, and we can give Keltham a story that's consonant with that. But I think there must be a way to make it consistent. The big problems are, if Keltham later sees me acting in a way that isn't consonant with what he assumed we all agreed that my mental state was— or if someone else starts crying later in a way that makes Keltham suspect that it's actually less of an emergency than he assumed, which seems unlikely, but not so unlikely that it isn't a way that we could get unlucky in a project where everyone is operating at this level of stress. Security brings in the transcript, 
which Asmodia quickly skims. It includes more of Corva's thoughts than Asmodia had seen before, but not, unfortunately, Keltham's. Resigning herself to being a paving stone? Ouch. That's bringing up bad memories of, like, all of Asmodia's entire life before the gardens of Eracura, which Asmodia has mostly been trying to forget about of late, as is probably healthy for her since Alter Asmodia doesn't have those memories anyways. All right, new read on this whole situation. Security speculated that Keltham was supposed to be notified in Alter Cheliax, probably because they thought it was a large event, as it would in fact be in Cheliax, also because Keltham has previously been pretty unhappy about not being told things. Keltham was told, but not in a way that signaled it was a large event. Keltham reacted to it as a large event. Keltham asked Savar what she thought about it. Savar thought it was a large event. Milol hasn't told Keltham at any point in this transcript that he thought it was a big deal. Mayal may have acted or emoted in a way that doesn't show up in the transcript. I'll have it checked with him. But this situation may be partially recoverable if Mylil calls back Keltham asking Keltham why he thought this was a major emergency, if we think that's a good idea. Asmodia passes Corva the briefly censored transcript. She reads it. Hmm. If he thinks I'm having some particular pattern of emotional spiral of doom, I'm not sure I can act consistently with that, not knowing what it is, which makes it risky to keep me around any place where he can see me. The safest thing to do in the short term is going to be to remove me from anywhere that he can make direct observations of me, let him think that nothing more complicated than his existing hypothesis actually happened, although that might break down if he does decide to ask further questions about the specific reasons for it. There are longer-term risks from confirming everything he thinks is happening, and then letting him see some other element of human behavior here that comes into conflict with it, but I'm not sure whether those are outweighed by the amount of mistakes people might make in the recovery. The high priest would have to have a strong sense of what happened in Alter Cheliax and why his Alter self's assessment of it is if we want to take that route, which might be just as fraught. The safest thing is to figure out what we're doing in Alter Cheliax and do exactly that. Every time we ask what's safe for the conspiracy, we act like the conspiracy. Right now, in Alter Cheliax, it sounds like maybe Mayol is gently talking to you with his great Asmodian priestly competence at that like the expert emergency response personnel that he is, finding out what really happened. He definitely didn't talk for five minutes, and then snap approve me taking responsibility for you so that he could get you out of his office. We need to figure out what really happened in Alter Cheliax, and then we need to figure out what Alter Cheliax tells Keltham about that. It's fine if that contradicts whatever theory Keltham has now. What it has to not do is contradict the way he's seen my all, Savar, myself, security, you, act about it. The naive conspiracy plays along with whatever Keltham believes. The real Alter Cheliax. The Alter Cheliax that's true to itself. The alternate plane of existence where there's an actual Alter Cheliax if there is such a thing. The real Alter Cheliax doesn't play along. So, okay... What I was thinking at the time was, I misbudgeted my time last night, spent too much time and mental energy that I didn't have on things that weren't making sure I had the rule of succession down pat. I did some work with the rule of succession during breakfast, but I wasn't getting it and I was getting frustrated. Then we got the test and I knew I didn't know how to do it. And I guess I panicked, panicked in some really specific way that meant I was fine at some kinds of thinking, but stopped being able to read math. I don't know how to explain it better than that. I realized that I was going to turn in something totally worthless, and I wouldn't get the job. That's all green what really happened. Now specifically in Alter Cheliax, Alter Corva had gotten her hopes up about getting the job. Her older sister died in the last year, and she's still grieving it. She'd been hoping that if she was hired, she would be able to make the money necessary to buy her a resurrection and get her back. The grief hit her, fresh again, when she realized it couldn't be fixed, combined with the knowledge that it was her own fault for being stupid and making dumb mistakes. She realized she was crying, and she put her head down about it. Older sister real? Keltham. 
I can't predict if he'd try to res her once he's got a spare 10 000 GP, but we need to be ready if he does. Also, if she's not real, veto because we're not being faithful to the probability of dead sisters. Real older sister, really dead. But I don't think we should use the real one. The real one was executed for apostasy, not dead of consumption like Alter Corva's, and we can't trust her to take orders. I do have a cousin about the same age who really did die of consumption. Plausibly, we could use her, or maybe a completely different actress if we think that people who have actually been in hell for a few years are going to be harder to control in the relevant ways. Which seems... possible, given we're lying about what hell is like. No shit, Corva. Your altar sister is doing great in hell and you're in no hurry to res her. If you accumulate enough money and pull working for me that you can actually res her, and you feel like doing that, do it off the books where Keltham can't see. Do we think that someone in Alter Cheliax, Corva in Alter Cheliax, doesn't break down in tears just because they can't get the job? They also need a dead sister they were hoping to res? If you're telling the complete truth about what drove you to a breakdown here, and if you were foolish enough to be concealing anything else, you'd better unconceal it right now, because there will be a security check later. Then it's just true that you encountered a stressor large enough to break you in real Cheliax. Any time we can go with something very close to the real story, we usually try to do that, because it often has a ring of realness to it that a more dramatic story lacks. The stakes for getting the job are higher in real Cheliax, but people in Alter Cheliax suffer less crippling penalties for breaking down in tears. Plausibly, that balances out. No, I didn't cover why I started crying in real Cheliax. In real Cheliax, I also realized that I wasn't going to get the job, but in real Cheliax, I thought that meant both being kicked off of the project and being required to stay in the compound not doing anything else, or else be killed and sent directly to hell, and I didn't feel like I'd learned enough. Being mortal, I felt that I would look very worthless in terms of real skills to the devils in hell, and that they wouldn't want me. Not just the way they wouldn't want a project girl. I thought that I had been turned into someone worthless by the project, someone who could have been moderately valuable if I'd just gone to the world wound and been a normal wizard, but who was instead going to be frozen at what I knew in young adulthood because I'd been pulled onto this project and then cast off with nothing else to do with myself, nowhere else to grow. Even if project leadership didn't kill me, I wouldn't be allowed to do anything real, the sorts of things that might have made me more valuable in hell. And I hated myself and my circumstances so much in that moment, realizing that I wasn't inherently worthless but might have been rendered so, or nearly so, in the last week. That's why I started crying, because I was upset about what the project might have done to my eternity. I truly don't envy Sever her own job. Prediction. Sever's going to have an additional lecture about this, where she tells everyone how much she is going to make sure anybody in her fortress stays useful to her, including them being tutored in ring-making or other advanced wizard skills, which Paxty and the others are. If that's what it takes to get people not to break down on math tests in ways they wouldn't in Alter Cheliax. Prediction. It's still not going to work. People in Cheliax, their whole previous lives, they're all fucking... I don't even know what word I want to use here. Scared, I guess. And the fact that everyone's required to believe they aren't scared means that they can't think about whether or not a situation is actually scary. I'm going to try selling Sever on how much we show everybody else that nothing bad was allowed to happen to you, and then maybe at least this crop of newbies will actually fucking believe the Chosen of Asmodeus about fucking anything. Which does still leave us the question of whether the job stressor part and the fear of failing out of the project and being stuck in the fortress was enough to get to Alter Corva. I don't think so, not on its own. If you're not worried about it hurting your eternity, the fortress isn't a bad place and Alter Corva doesn't have other reasons to care that much about the money that everyone keeps throwing around. There's probably something if we've fenced ourselves in everywhere else, but it doesn't ring true to me. I do think. If the claim that my alter self is in no hurry to res my sister and isn't sad about her death was an order, 
then I'll take it and work with it. But in case it's the sort of thing I'm supposed to dispute, I think it's wrong. My sister has a young son that she's missing the childhood of, and Alter Korva would miss her too. People in other countries, even good countries, do actually grieve and feel sad about it when people die, even when they think they went to afterlives where they're having a wonderful time. I think it we build into alter celiacs that people don't grieve here ever. That runs a risk of running into problems too. It, also, I don't think you can resurrect people who were executed for apostasy, but that's, sorry, not what we're talking about. It's illegal by default, but if the project drops spell silver prices by a factor of 10, I expect that to not be an obstacle to Project Lawful Girls. Well, researchers, if any of the male candidates make it. Savar might overrule me if she sees some way it plays into her own game of corrupting Keltham. Like if she's sure Keltham will choose not to resurrect your sister, and expects that to be good evil progress. But I am reluctant to make that be the story, given that we can't actually res your actual sister. Keltham could ask to scry your sister. It's a truth that leads into too many other possibly required lies. There's nothing else in your life, Alter, Corva's life, that she'd have been emotionally attached to doing if she could only get a million gold pieces to do it with. No, not that I've thought of. When Keltham assumed we wanted money, I was offended at the wrong assumption. When Pilar told me I'd get a duchy if we won, I was annoyed with her for assuming I would want one. I've been thinking about why Alter Corva was even here. Given she couldn't have been kidnapped into it, and I think I can piece together enough half-reasons to justify it, but not reasons to cry about failing, not ones I've thought of other than wanting her sister back. I could probably think of some things that people who weren't me might want. They'd be harder to play if he ever saw me again, because I not only don't want them, but am learning that I apparently feel contempt for the idea of wanting most of them. I wish I could be on all of the telepathic bonds, constantly monitoring all of the situations and think quickly enough that in a situation like this, I could actually talk the entire thing through with you fast enough to determine that you were not crying in Alter Cheliacs. Otolmens is not messing with the correctly thinking mortal again after what happened last time. Option one that I've been able to come up with here, Alter Corva is weak, cracked under ordinary pressure. Option two? Alter Corva did have something she desperately wanted to do. She doesn't want to talk about it. Security truth spelled her just in case. But that doesn't mean the rest of us know. Mostly we don't mention that to Keltham because it's private to Corva. We just tell him she hoped too hard. If Keltham presses, which I predict he won't, security tells him that it's about your dead sister who committed a murder and got executed over it. It's illegal to bring her back without a crown order, and you thought you could get that by outperforming. I predict Sevar vetoes option two, but want to give you a chance to sell that over option one. I'm halfway inclined to veto it myself. On grounds of how much it sounds like you might be a romantic interest fated to Keltham by unbroken prophecy, like Sevar, which is one of those complexities we didn't want to try to explain until you'd all mastered the basics. But I think we may just need to press ahead and explain the tropes tonight, at this point. So, um, can I? You know what? No. I don't think Alter Corva wants to resurrect a sister who committed murder. I think I can manage weak. I am weaker than most Chelish people. If those are our options, that seems like the more plausible option. And if we don't act like it's absolutely unthinkable for largely untested students to turn out to be that weak under these conditions, then it doesn't even fence us into making it implausible if someone else happens to crack later, too. All right, we're rather in the middle of a wall disaster recovery here, so I'm going to have Savar updated on what we think was going on. Check if she approves a Malol interrupt. If you wish to support this AI reading and others like it, please visit patreon.com slash AI. Any help is appreciated. And thank you to executive producer John Doe 7776059 